Hello everybody and welcome to another YouTube video. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about blockchain technology and dApps, otherwise known as decentralized applications. Now I want this video to act as a high level introduction to decentralized applications and how you can use blockchain technology to actually create apps. Now the reason I'm making this is because recently there's been a lot of hype around cryptocurrency, but a lot of people look at cryptocurrency and blockchain in general and think that's only a way to make money. They treat it simply as an investment and something that they can trade almost like a stock. However, there's a completely different side of cryptocurrency, which is the development side. And well, that's what this video is going to focus on. So in this video, I'm going to talk to you about what a blockchain is, what decentralization is, what a dApp is, and then the pros and cons of a dApp and some of the different solutions that companies are implementing to create dApps. However, before we go any further, I do need to mention that I myself am not a cryptocurrency or blockchain expert. And that's why for this video, I teamed up with a company called Cartesi, which helped me shape a lot of the content in this video. Now, Cartesi is a company that's dedicated to making the blockchain and cryptocurrency more accessible to developers like you and I. They have a ton of different products and solutions that allow the blockchain to be more affordable to use, easier to use, and they just provide a bunch of tutorials, resources, and really cool products, and you can check them out from the link in the description. Now, they also are the sponsor of this video. I'll likely be working with them in the future to create in-depth tutorials on how to actually make decentralized applications. But as I said, in this video, it's just going to be a high-level overview on how dApps work. So let's go ahead and get started. So before we get into decentralized applications, the first thing you need to understand is what a blockchain is. So I'll give you a simple definition here. A blockchain is a system of storing information that makes it extremely difficult or impossible to hack, cheat or change. So generally speaking, we can trust this system and we know everything on a blockchain is true, accurate and complete information. And it's not been hacked or kind of modified maliciously in any way. Now, going a bit further, blockchains are used in cryptocurrencies like Ethereum, Bitcoin, and many other cryptocurrencies that you would know. And the way they work is they're a digital ledger of all of the transactions that have occurred in this cryptocurrency's history. Now, this ledger is distributed to all of the different computers that are sitting on the blockchain network. So you may have heard of the term miners before. These are really computers that are sitting on the blockchain and they store a copy of this digital ledger. So every single computer that's on, for example, the Ethereum network has a copy of the Ethereum blockchain. And this makes it very, very hard for someone to actually maliciously change or send a malicious transaction on the blockchain. Now, the way that works is if someone wanted to actually send something through on the blockchain that was inaccurate, was false, was some malicious type of transaction, or they wanted to modify some block or something, they would need to actually do that on almost all of the computers that are on the blockchain because every blockchain is storing or sorry, every computer is storing a copy of the blockchain. So if you were to send through a malicious transaction, it'd be very easy to detect because all of these other computers on the blockchain would say, hey, I don't have that transaction here. That's not accurate. We're not going to include that on the blockchain. Get rid of it. Now, obviously, I'm oversimplifying here, but that's really the basics of how a blockchain works. And that's why we call it decentralized, because it's a distributed ledger across all of the computers on the network, on the blockchain network. And that means we can trust that everything on the blockchain is correct because there's not one centralized organization, entity, power, government, whatever, controlling what goes on the blockchain. It's a peer, right? Or it's a group of computers all around the world sitting on the blockchain network. So to end off this section, I'll just say that the complete opposite of something like a blockchain would be something like a bank, right? A bank also has a ledger of transactions. It keeps the balances of different accounts that are with that bank. However, this is all controlled by a central organization. There's not a large group or a large network of computers or random people around the world controlling this. It's one central institution, and maybe this institution is backed by a government or something like that. But that means you cannot be guaranteed that there won't be any malicious activity or stuff going on with the transactions occurring because there's only one entity controlling this. It is centralized, not decentralized. So before moving forward, I just want to quickly talk to you about some of the main advantages of decentralization. Now, really, the core advantage is you never have to worry about trust. You never have to put your trust in a central organization, institution, government, whatever it may be. And that is really 
just a great thing because, you know, the famous saying goes, absolute power corrupts absolutely. And we can look in history and see lots of examples where a large institutional organization has been corrupted, has been malicious and wasn't actually able to be trusted. And you can go and look at a lot of other countries and see what they've done with their currency, mass inflation, stealing from the people. Go on. You can find all kinds of examples, but that's really the core advantage of decentralization is there's no need to trust. I don't have to put my trust in you. You don't have to put your trust in me. We trust the entire network as a whole because it's next to impossible for any central entity or organization to go in there and be malicious and do something fraudulent. That is the advantage of decentralization. And that's really the whole reason why cryptocurrency has become super popular, especially in a lot of parts in the world where they cannot trust their government or cannot trust the banking organization or maybe don't even have access to that. So finally, we can start talking about dApps, otherwise known as decentralized applications. Now, dApps are really just decentralized apps. That's all they are. That means they use some type of blockchain technology and we can trust all of the code associated with this application because it's completely open source it never has any downtime. And once it's added to the network, it cannot be removed, modified or changed. So just like transactions, we know we can trust when they're on the blockchain. We know we can trust all of the code that's on the blockchain because we can see it ourselves. We know it cannot be changed or modified, and we know it's never just going to disappear because the blockchain is always available. The blockchain never goes down. I won't explain that too much more, but that's pretty much how it works. Now, what is a smart contract? Well, a smart contract, as I was kind of alluding to, is just code sitting on the blockchain. It can be executed by the blockchain, and you can think of it kind of like a set of rules. The most basic example of a smart contract is something that allows you to exchange one coin for another. So the best analogy that I've actually found for a smart contract is something like a vending machine. So a vending machine stores money and it stores, you know, some type of goods, right? In this case, maybe we'll say it stores chips or food or whatever. If you give the correct amount of money to the vending machine, you always get the good that you are looking for. If you give too much money, it gives you change. No matter what, it always works. A smart contract is exactly the same way. Just like you might have your own Ethereum wallet, you can actually have Ethereum stored in your smart contract or maybe some other type of good or service or coin or whatever it may be. And every time you give certain input to this smart contract, you always get the same output. It can never be changed. It's not malicious. You can't go in and modify it or hack it. And that is how we can trust applications that are on the blockchain because they are decentralized. They work just like when I send you a coin on the blockchain. So hopefully that's a decent enough explanation, but you use smart contracts to add executable code to the blockchain and then that code is used by an application, a D app. And that is why, you know, you can trust the application that you're using because it's distributed on the blockchain. So what I just said sounds great. And you're probably wondering why everyone doesn't just go use decentralized applications or actually make decentralized applications. But the reason why is because there's a lot of disadvantages as well. Now, the largest disadvantage with decentralized applications is the cost. It just costs you a lot of money, a lot of cryptocurrency to actually be able to run a decentralized application. Not only do you need to upload the smart contract to the blockchain that costs you money in transaction fees, then you also need to use the smart contract, make calls on the smart contract, which costs you transaction fees. And then if you want to store any information on the blockchain, that's going to cost you money. And it just is very, very expensive. Even storing very small amounts of uh, data on the blockchain can cost you literally hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. And while it doesn't make sense for a lot of companies or applications to use this because of the extremely high fees. Now, some of the other main disadvantages of decentralized applications include the high latency. It can take a lot of time to send transactions or upload new smart contracts, poor user experience, inability to manage a ton of private keys and wallets and all the other data that you need. Right now, it's just not the best experience for developers. Fortunately, though, the sponsor of this video, which is Cartesi, is trying to help that. They have a bunch of different solutions. You can check them out from the link in the description to lower the cost associated with creating decentralized applications and remove a lot of those headaches. But still, there's a lot of disadvantages, even using some of these great solutions provided by companies like Cartesi. So as I was saying, there is a lot of disadvantages and problems with decentralized applications. However, there is different types of solutions that can be implemented to make them more cost efficient and to make them have a lower latency. Now, those solutions are categorized into layer one solutions and layer two solutions. 
Now, layer one solutions use the underlying blockchain technology. So a layer one solution would be just using Ethereum or using Bitcoin, using the actual cryptocurrency or blockchain itself. Now, one solution within the layer one solutions is something called sharding. Now, what sharding is, is kind of splitting up all of the code or all of the you know, aspects of a decentralized application into things called shards and then distributing that on the blockchain network such that it gets executed faster. And you don't need to wait for, say, an entire massive large piece of code to be executed. Instead, you have, you know, 20 or 30 pieces of code that are being executed or 20 or 30 shards that need to be, you know, run through the network. And so you can kind of split this up and things can go a lot faster, just like what would happen if you say split your application into multiple threads or multiple cores. So that's one solution layer one solution called sharding that can kind of increase the speed and cost of effectiveness, sorry, of using blockchain. However, then you have layer two solutions. Now, layer two solutions are typically more advanced. And what they are is actually a technology or system that lies above the underlying blockchain technology. So an example of a layer two solution would be something like a state channel. Now, a state channel is pretty complicated to explain. But really, it's a way that two users can communicate without using the blockchain in the way in which the blockchain would work. A little bit confusing, but it's like using the blockchain, just not using the blockchain such that you don't have to pay the huge latency and cost associated with the blockchain. So what happens is two users will communicate with each other using this state channel. And then once the communication is done or the transaction is complete, only then will it be uploaded to the blockchain. So rather than, say, having a thousand microtransactions occurring on the blockchain, you have those occur in the state channel and then those get wrapped into one larger transaction, which then gets uploaded onto the blockchain. Again, the purpose of that is to lower the latency and to make sure that uh, you're not going to have to pay massive fees for all of the different transactions that are going through. Now, in this video, I'm not going to explain exactly how these solutions work. I'm just trying to give you an idea of what's kind of going on out there and how people are trying to mitigate the disadvantages of the blockchain. So these solutions, as I stated them, do still make sure that the trust is secure. They use very advanced math and cryptography to make sure that everything is all good. But those are just two examples of a layer one a layer two solution and how you can kind of mitigate some of those disadvantages of the blockchain. So I'm going to start wrapping up the video here by just giving you two examples of decentralized applications so that you can kind of read about them and check them out for yourself. So the first application is something called Uniswap. Now, Uniswap is a decentralized finance protocol, so it's called DeFi, and this allows you to actually exchange cryptocurrencies for each other. So this is a D app. You can look up Uniswap and kind of see how it works if you want to learn more about it. But another more interesting one that was actually developed by Cartesi using some of their solutions is called HODLM Poker. So HODL, H-O-D-L, is kind of the term in cryptocurrency for holding your coins no matter what, never selling them. So it's kind of a punny name in that sense. But this is an implementation of poker, Texas Hold'em, in which it's actually decentralized. So you don't have to worry about trusting some large poker organization or website. There's actually a lot of history of poker websites and poker players specifically cheating and scamming other people. In this case, you just trust the blockchain and this allows you to play poker without worrying about, you know, being scammed or fraud or people seeing your cards or mixing up the shuffle, whatever it may be. So I'll leave a link to that game in the description. There's a great video by Cartesi that explains kind of how that works that you can check out. But I think with that, I'm going to end the video here. So as I mentioned, I did team up with Cartesi to create this video. They helped me come up with a lot of the content that I shared here. They are the true blockchain and cryptocurrency experts. Well, you should check them out from the link in the description. They provide a lot of layer one and layer two solutions to help create D apps, decentralized applications, and really mitigate some of those disadvantages that I talked about before. Look for some more videos coming from them in the future related to actually creating D apps. And let me know what you thought of this video in the comments down below. With that said, like the video if you enjoyed, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in another one.